I think it's uh, loving what you do. It's your passion that drives you, and it's the ability to be persuasive, to be pa uh, not only passionate, but also to um, make a difference. And I think those are all things that, you know, you have to be purpose-driven in life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Rorik knows. No, I'm kidding. It's the rhinoplasty podcast, <laughs> but I've got uh, Prof. Farad with me. It's just such a pleasure to be able to meet with you in person. We're in Berlin coming to you That's from right. the International Meeting Rhinoplasty Societies. And uh, wow, I just think back to the first time I met you in person was in Versailles in 2016. That's right. God, didn't seem like that long ago, does it? Wow, but so much has happened since then. Oh, yes. Oh, all those crazy things and COVID. And everything. Wow. I mean, I remember when I came to you, that's when you invited me to come and visit you in Dallas in early 2017. And it, the, the impact of that visit has had around the world in many ways, because like I think back to, to coming to meet you and it was the foundation for me of my rhinoplasty techniques being able to be in the OR, sit there and learn, and then go down the road to Spencer and mm -hmm. be able to be between the two of you. And I mean, th that to me is just, its it was wonderful to do that. But the two other things that I learned from it is I got inspired to go out and build my own surgical center because of Dallas Plastic Surgery Institute. And I thought, cheap as if Rod Rorick can do this, man. I, must also I can do it too, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that was good. And then I think the other thing that, was, that the listeners aren't aware of is I clearly remember the one day we were sitting there in the OR and you turned to me and you said to me, Cameron, I think you should start a society. And the cool thing about it was that with my kind of background as ENT and your guys from plastics, I came back to South Africa and we, with open arms, these two specialities just embraced to form Saucer. Right. And uh, so, yeah, thanks, man. It was, it was good to get yeah. that push. Well, you know, it's great because, you know, it's so good for ENT and pot surgery to get along, especially yeah. in rhinoplasty. You know, we all, you know, we do it. We do it well. We learn from each other. And yeah. hell, we, you know, we all learned from Jack Gunter, who was an ENT and pot surgery. Yeah. And, you know, so I'm, I, it's a lot of kinship. So so how, so I know it sounds like it was simple, but it, how, it took, it took a while to form Sorcerer, did it not? Oh, it was a lot of work, eh? I mean, you gave us initially bylaws that we could uh, change, etc. And we had meetings and Faisal the Payton eventually came out and he was our first chair just to officially right. do the whole thing. No, it was hard work. Uh, you know, I, I think people kind of think that, oh, there's quick success, but there's no such a thing as quick success. And that's one of the two things I wanted to ask you about is um, the first topic I want to just chat to you about is kind of resilience and perseverance in doing what you do because you play a role it's such a varied role in not just in rhinoplasty and plastic surgery education around the world but running a really brilliant practice and speaking at meetings and set what is it that drives you to be able to persevere like that I think it's uh, loving what you do it's your passion that drives you and it's the ability to be persuasive to be pa uh, not only passionate but also to um, make a difference and i think those are all things that you know you have to be purpose-driven in life yeah if you don't have a purpose-driven life you're nowhere I yeah mean, you have to be so focused on doing what you love to do and i think that's what makes it makes it tick and if you stop being purpose-driven die so you've got to keep going. I think it's very important. And That's passion so is what it's all about. You know, if you want, you got to be passionate to be great at what you do. Because there's a lot of stumbling blocks. You know, success isn't like this. It's like this, yeah. you know. But it's not just the passion. You know, you, you back the passion up with excellence and precision. Yeah. Like every, even just in surgery, every movement is thought through. It's not just, oh, I'm passionate, I'm going to do a great yeah. Uh, operation you know yes you need that but you need underlying that is it's, it's i almost look at it sometimes i have this feeling of like a, a, a silk glove over a hand on the outside look cool and it's neat but the stuff that goes on underneath there i don't think people even realize how much effort goes in yeah no it's a lot of work i mean yeah. it takes a long time to perfect what you do and um but it's hard work and 
and it's repeating things that you like to do and then looking back at what you did that you did that wasn't always the things that worked out so i think you you learn from that and i think um you know and that's that's really surgery that's plastic surgery that's the art and that's the beauty of what we do especially in rhinoplasty it's yeah. the hardest thing we do it's a surgery yeah. of millimeters you know a millimeter here and a millimeter there is a great happy patient versus one other millimeter in other places is an unhappy patient yeah, yeah. so there's a very narrow fine line and i think that's exciting but it's also something that you know you always have to aim high yeah, yeah. if you don't aim high you get there yeah, yeah. so and prof i've so enjoyed a lot of your talks and presentations and discussions etc at the conference now um this very interesting one that you gave on social media yesterday but for the listeners out there, I want to ask you is where do you, what's like the cutting edge stuff that's happening in rhinoplasty at the moment? I think it's, uh, I mean, preservation is kind of a hot topic now. And basically it's, you know, you're, you're really trying to preserve the top of the nose without opening it. And I think it's a misnomer type of um, yeah. name for a procedure. I think it's a nice technique and a refinement, but is it, Really a game changer? I don't think it's really that yeah. much of a game changer. Yeah. I think you still have to learn the basics of, of rhinoplasty. I think the exciting thing has been the ability to actually get more consistent, great results. Yeah, I see better and better results, even from my fellows that are out a year or two, because it used to take five to seven years. But now I see them, maybe we're teaching it better, maybe the techniques have got better, but... Certainly, it took me a lot longer when I was starting, but I think, you know, we have refined the techniques and we're teaching them, which really makes me happy because whenever I see one of my fellows that actually shows a good result on Instagram, yeah. I say, wow, that's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. give them a thumbs up and, yeah. you know, it took, it took that takes a lot. And so it's that that's very gratifying. It's not, it's not, it's always about the journey. It's awesome, mate. Not the destination. But uh, and the last thing I want to touch on is the, your Dallas course that you run. I mean, how many years? That thing's been going for like 30 years or something? 40 years. Last year, we honored Dr. Gunter, and, and I've been with it over 30 of those. And um, yeah, we've taught over 15,000 rhinoplastic surgeons, both you know facial plastic, ENT, plastic surgeons. It's really been the core for what I think has resurrected rhinoplasty in the United States. And probably globally, too, because yeah. we usually have three, fifty, four hundred from 40 to 50 countries uh, at the meeting. And it just kind of, you know, flows beautifully. And, um, you know, it's a unique thing. And the ability to give back a lot of things have sprung from there. The course, the book, the videos, all these things and hundreds of publications and yeah. really leaders in, you know, in rhinoplasty like yourself in South Africa. And it's that kind of thing that really is kind of, in sta- you, know, in, in, you know, really embodied what I think it, what Jack Gunter wanted was that it was a game changer. But it's more than just rhinoplasty. I mean, for the listeners out there, it's not just the courses, body plastics as well, yeah. and a lot of new f- in, in fillers and injections yeah. and stuff yeah. as well. Well, we started that about maybe 20, 20 plus years ago because we had so many international visitors and they said, listen, we'd love to have something also about other things, yeah. you know, cosmetic medicine, cosmetic surgery. Yeah. So we yeah, yeah. did it as an add-on and people love that because then we have cadaver courses that actually talk about facelifts and do facelifts, you know, and, and then now it's rhinoplasty. So it's really combining the two together. And, and it's really, I think, the best course, if you want in a short time period, learn the best of the best and the most innovations yeah, yeah. in one place, yeah. one time. Yeah. yeah. I had a very interesting chat with Ash Gavami about it as well. And, and he yeah. was telling me about how much data they've been able to get through the cadavers and how much like through that to be able to publish and do research, et cetera. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we've done multiple studies and it's really, you know, you always have to be thinking of what's next, Yeah. you know, and you have to say, okay, how can we do it better? How can we do it safer? How can we get better outcomes? Those things always have to be in the front of the, of your mind to yeah. say, so are we doing the best for our patients? Last question I want to ask you about your the podcast that you run. What's it been like for you? It's great. It's called Roric Knows Podcast. It's fun. We talk about things, that, you know, helping you become a better you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to get you on that, and we're going to do that <laughs> soon. And uh, 
it really is uh, hopefully empowers people to be more educated yeah. about not only medical things, but just things that they should know about to help them make better life decisions, yeah. better medical decisions, yeah, better yeah. decisions about who and what they are. And and it's been fun. Uh, it's been, um, you know, just take a look. It's under Dr. Rod Rourke, but it's Rourke Knows Podcast. And yeah. it's just a fun thing to do. And, you know, we, you get a global audience to talk about things you love to do. Yeah, that's fantastic. I had a very nice chat to uh, Prof. Dean as well earlier because I know you interviewed him Yes. A few weeks ago. Um, and and we were speaking about one of the things, is, which is good about what you're saying about the, the, the nose podcast, because often I think as, as as physicians, we don't actually care for ourselves too much. We're so obsessed with our work and our patients that we kind of neglect our own self-health, right. as it were. And that's hopefully being addressed through your podcast as well. Right, absolutely. And I had Dean on. I always have, we try and have leaders in the field that are innovative yeah, yeah. and stuff. And we talked about his anti-inflammatory diet. You know, it's fun. It's fun. You know, you, you learn a lot, you do a lot, you give back a lot. That's what this life's about. Well, that's great, eh? Good. Yeah, we still want to try and get you to Africa one day to chat about rhinoplasty in Africa. Yeah. I'll come. I'd like to bring my family and we'll do it as a safari. Yeah. Photo safari. Photo safari. <laughs> I'm with you, eh? All right. This great. Great. Good. Guys, thank you for tuning in for another little episode and um, we look forward to chatting to you guys again next week sometime. Prof, thank you so much for you your bet. time and safe you travels bet. back to the States. You bet.